Victims will have no idea. Uh, okay, uh, it's uh, Thursday, October 26, 2017. Um, knocked all doors all day yesterday, uh, going out at about 11 a.m. today um, to the south side of my town, Phoenix. Um, we have an appointment tonight, and a guy that keeps uh, trying to push appointments back. Um, he's pretty serious, but, uh, you know, he hasn't really responded <clears throat> as far as, uh, you know, when he said he was going to respond, um, we showed up at his house last night. His kids were there. They got on the phone with them. They, he just said, come back tomorrow night. I'll be here at six, six thirty. So hopefully another contract signed, um, probably right around a $290,000 ARV. Um, the house doesn't need a lot of work and it's in, uh, the South, uh, east part of of town uh of phoenix which is chandler it's a great area so possibly another chandler deal um i'm gonna hit doors in south phoenix tonight that's the original place where i'm from and uh you know it's kind of booming down there they're building new uh there's a starbucks you get a community college um there's a lot of development down there so anything that i pick up down there there's a lot of like the cash buyers that don't want stuff in south phoenix and i but I know a handful of guys that really, really want South Phoenix. And again, they can see kind of the vision and the future of that town. It, it's it's totally worth it um, because it, it's being built up down there, you know. So lots. Um, I'm working on picking up a lot down there. Uh, and then I'm going to go, like, find some vacants and work some pre-foreclosures with, um, one, you know, one of my students, uh, Kobe. And, uh, again, he's really putting in the work. He quit his job. Uh, he owns two homes. He has one. Uh, that his wife's parents live in that they basically pay for and then his home and um, it's a three hundred thousand dollar house so it takes a a lot of risk to actually quit a job that pays for that type of home um, and, you know and his what him and his wife have savings but it's only a matter of time before he actually would spend all that money if he didn't put in the work so he's basically you know ready to go every morning and acting like he really wants it um, so, you know, that's essentially what it comes down to, uh, you know, as an entrepreneur, whatever business you're in, if you don't act like you're doing it, um, then, you know, it's not really going to work for you. You know, you really have to wake up, be hungry and just that's exactly what you do and, and just go out and do it. And his mentality is completely that he doesn't really say no to me at all. You know, I'm like, let's go at 11, um, you know, and, and let's work pretty much every day. Um, and he's all about it. So um, I'm actually going to have him lead and work, work the deal tonight. He's only been at it for about two weeks. Um, so um, he's already picked up basically, uh, you know, one potential deal. But, you know, again, we went out knocking yesterday. We found a lot in South Phoenix that could potentially be a deal, um, you know, and a couple other doors that looked decent. But, um, you know, we found out that they had caught up on their payments um, but, uh, you know, maybe five to seven doors, um, we went to, and then nobody was home. We went back to, and we caught people. So, um, it's all about the follow up, you know, completely following up a door knock is not really a door knock until somebody actually answers the door and make, you make contact with them and figure out what's going on. So, um, um, uh, you know, you don't have to work a thousand leads, um, and just hit. It, it once every time like you know just c continually follow up until somebody answers the door because situations change emotions change people are confident that they're gonna be able to you know sell their home or, I mean, or keep their home um and again you hear it every day you know i have it handled i have it handled and then I, I keep following up with people when i keep seeing that you know my system that it's still in foreclosure you know going into foreclosure so you know if you're if you got it handled why isn't it handled um, and again, nice, assertive at the door, um, you know, and really, you know, if they get combative, you know, just be nice. Um, and that's the best that you can do. Also, um, you know, I'm just trying to make contact, get a phone number, um, and then continue to follow up with them and keep, you know, my name in front of their mind. Um, so when I do call them, they know who I am. And, uh, you know, again, I've there's deals that, you know, I got under contract that, you know, they were going to be great money. And if they caught up with their payments, they caught up with their payments. Like, you know, we want people to keep their homes, but if you can't, we're there to, you know, bail you out. So, um, uh, 
you know, again, I, got, I do good business. Um, I'm direct to the door, direct to the seller. I don't co-wholesale any of my properties, which means I don't get them under contract uh, or, or not get them under contract. You know, like I don't assign contracts from other wholesalers that they knocked on the door, or got the, the deal in whatever way that they did. Um, all my deals have my name on it, my LLC's name on it. So um, uh, that makes me a lot more uh, valuable in the real estate community as far as cash buyers go, people that actually rehab homes. Um, they know when I call them with the deal that it's my deal. It's it's never um, somebody else's deal. So, uh, you know, that that's the kind of my company standard, and that's why I'm so assertive and aggressive about knocking on doors. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, it's getting towards the end of the year. Uh, things tend to slow down um, in real estate towards the end of the year. There's a lot of holidays. The title companies have a lot more days off. Um, everybody in the real estate community kind of slows down because they have, they, they make great money in, in real estate, but, um, when it comes to the holidays, getting into Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the new years, you know, again, they, they slow down because they have money in their pocket and, um, that's when there's more opportunity. Um, so again, no days off. I mean, you know, if it's like Christmas, obviously I'm probably not going to knock a door, but Christmas Eve, I will, you know, um, the day of Christmas Eve, you know, I'll probably stop at like five or six at night, but you know, I'm not going to you know bother people. Uh, but you know, again, if you can catch somebody, um, around the holidays and you know, they're, they're maybe moving on to the next chapter and they have children, they're about to lose their home. Um, again, this contract that we're probably, we're, we're most likely going to get tonight. The, the, the guy's auction date is on the 20th of, um, of December. So, you know, he probably wants to sell his house, have some cash in his pocket, get a new spot and, um, have enough money to buy his kids some presents and things like that and get, and get to the next chapter of his life. So he's not real, uh, uh, hard to deal with or anything. He's just, you know, again, he, he barely wants to deal with it. He wants to make sure he gets the maximum amount. He was offered another amount that was a little bit less than what we can actually give him. Um, and the guy probably would have gotten the deal if he would have followed up, but I'm sure that that guy just didn't follow up. Like he offered him it and the guy didn't take it. Um, and he probably never got a call back from the guy that made the offer. So, um, you know, we're offering him a little bit more. It's not much. And, uh, you know, I'm basically giving him what he wants. Um, he's got some liens on there that he needs to handle. So he's going to take care of those liens. Usually we can take care of the liens, but the liens are pretty much too high. He's asking for, for a certain purchase price, and usually what I say is I'm going to pay the liens and uh, pay the mortgage uh, and put some cash in your pocket, you know, and that's essentially what we can do if we can get it at the right price. But if somebody comes with a purchase price of X, X amount of dollars, right, and um, they got some liens on there, I say, well, you know, I'm, I'm giving you the price that he wants. Like, he wants a certain price, and I'm giving it to him, but those liens, like, you're taking care of those. So that's a, a great strategy to work with. You know, um, you can do what's called net to seller, which is basically net to seller means that you get um, this amount of dollars. Like if it's five thousand dollars cash in your pocket, like that's the check that you're going to get or you can structure a, a certain purchase price and that purchase price is whatever they say. But then you can kind of leverage the fact that, you know, if you have these liens, like we're not paying those, we're not paying, uh, we're not charging you any realtor costs because they're not realtors. And we're going to pay the closing costs because in the state of Arizona, we always get the buyer to pay the closing costs. Um, so um, most deals are like that. Um, so again, he doesn't really have any like sort of exit strategy. Um, he's just basically, you know, I, I feel really good about this, um, you know, negotiation tonight because we're giving him what he wants. Um, and he has enough equity to walk with where it's a, it's a large amount. Even when he pays the liens off, it's still a lot of money. Um, it's enough to me to make some money um, and my student. Um, and then the cash buyer doesn't need to do a lot of work. Um, and uh, they can make some money. So everybody wins uh, in a deal like that. So again, door-to-door -door problem solver. You know, if you've done door-to-door -door sales in your life, um, you have to retrain your mind to, uh, you know, solve problems rather than, um, you know, sell something because again, closing is really about solving problems. Being an entrepreneur is about solving problems. Um, yeah, you in a sense are a salesman, but you know, you want to create some sort of value and that's always the best way to do something. If you're selling some, 
something that they don't need, then, you know, that's, those are dirty tactics. It's just you want to put money in your pocket and take money out of theirs. And, and if they're not going to use it, then there's no real value there. Um, so creating value is really, um, uh, you know, what I'm all about. Um, again, like I said, direct to seller, which means that I'm going to the door or I'm, I'm getting that contract under my company name. My cash buyers know that my value is that, that like the deal that I get is from me. Um, and, um, I'm always trying to work a fair deal every single time. Um, and I've made a lot of money, um, off of fair deals. Uh, so again, real estate is a great way. It's a great vehicle to, uh, get, I've made a lot of mistakes in 2017. It's been a big learning year for me. I've made a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money. I've had some good partners. I've had some bad partners. Um, 2018 is going to be a much better uh, way. I've made so, so many mistakes this year. Um, but again, like, I just keep going and, um, you know, absolutely, um, I know that, like, I can do this. I can do this by myself. I can do it with people. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, this is not something I would want to pursue forever. Um, you know, obviously, I want other businesses and, and cash flow properties. Um, I owned a couple cash flow properties in my lifetime. And again, that's really what my retirement would would be if I were to ever retire, which fuck that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to work till I die so uh, or do something until I die. So, uh, you know, again, I, I love to work and um, I have a passion for it. Um, but again, it's got to really, you know, make sense to me. Um, I got to I got to love it. I got to you know have a passion for it and I have to make good money at it. You know, again, the money that I've been making this year has been great money, but like I'm have a hunger for a higher uh, dollar amount um, and I want to do bigger deals and uh, I want to start documenting more. So, again, these are some of the videos that I'm putting up. Also, um, you know, I want to write a book. Um, I want to, uh, you know, teach people how to teach people financial literacy, other ways to make money. And, and venture off into other things like maybe Forex and stocks and precious metals and um, other assets that really um, people don't um, pay attention to. You know, if you're in one thing, you're a jack of uh, all trades, master of nothing. So, um, you know, I want to be able to, you know, have different asset um, columns, you, you know what I mean? So if I have, you know, seven to ten cash flow properties um, and I have other couple other businesses that make me money and, um, I'm making money in the stock market or, um, I have holdings for silver and gold. Um, these are all asset classes that I want to be and I want to know about. Um, as soon as I have some, you, you know, more time when I have more, uh, money, you know, I'll educate myself first and foremost. I won't just go out there and like bl blindly blow money on in the stock market or in silver and gold or in Bitcoin or in, um, this and that, you know, I need to take the time to actually learn something, how to do it, um, invest a little bit of money in it, see if it works. Um, but again, like this, what this industry has taught me, um, what wholesaling has taught me is how to make money without money. And I'm really thankful for that. Um, so I know for the rest of my life, if I had to, like I could make money without money, I don't really necessarily need money to, um, you know, turn my life around. So, uh, but again, it's, it's taken me a lot of years to get really good at this. Um, and I am the fucking best. I believe that. Um, and, um, I only get better. And every time I make mistakes and I've made huge mistakes and, um, I've burned a lot of bridges. Um, so again, you know, all you can do is just be straight up about it. I'm sorry. I apologize. I made these mistakes and move forward. Um, you know, again, and, and if you really want something, you have to act like it. And sometimes I feel like, you know, the, some of the people that I worked with, they, you know, they, they, they didn't necessarily act like it enough for me because, you know, I remember when I first started, you know, I, I just was broke and nobody was there to hold my hand and I had to just keep knocking on doors. And that's gotten me to the point where I am today. Um, and I'm able to make, you know, pretty big checks. Um, thank God, like for all the like shit that happened to me, <laughs> you know, like I'm so thankful for that, all those bad times. Cause it makes me like right now at this point in my life, like I fear, nothing as far as money goes now like i know i can make the money and uh, i can make it without money so um you know I've, I've built a craft for myself that actually works and i want to venture off into other things um i'm 39 years old i'm about to hit 40 next year you know 2018 is going to be much better um th things are going to be much smoother 
um, because I know, you know, what to do and what not to do because of all those failures and, and huge mistakes that I make. You know, I need to work on um, uh, self uh, self improvement. You know, I really need to start eating better. I need to start um, exercising more. I need, you know, again more balance in my life. So um, I'm gonna work hard to to make sure that I can change and be the person that I've always dreamt of being. And that's what it's all about, you know. But, um, you know, definitely whole, real estate wholesaling is a vehicle to um, success, uh, a vehicle that you can get um, into real estate and learn how to make money without money. Uh, and then if you want to start flipping houses or if you want to start doing apartment complexes or if you want to start getting properties under contract for Airbnb, um, I mean, there's all different kinds of ways and there's all different kinds of money out there. And again, if you just go out there and you act like you want it, and you knock on doors or you make phone calls or but if you're kicking back you know and you're not doing nothing and you're just kind of trying marketing by emailing people and sending letters and hanging bandit signs and all that kind of stuff i mean that stuff works but you know if you want something now like you really got to go out and act like you get it like get on the phone or, or get to the door and do it so i really stress that uh, again i'm nate ness um and i can show you how to make money without money um, cause I do it pretty much, um, you know, every day. I mean, every month I'm, I'm at least getting one deal, you know what I mean? Or two deals. But if, if, if you're only averaging about one deal a month, like you're really not putting in the effort, you know, I've had deals where I've done, um, no deal that month, but you know, I did four deals the last month and I, it's just because I got paid so much money that I took a vacation. You know, I've taken three vacations this year. Um, in the last three years, I didn't get any vacations. <laughs> so, um, you, you know, really being consistent and having a pipeline of deals. And once I can, once I can, you know, do do that, and then start getting other properties that actually cash flow. Um, you know, I'll start building a asset column where you know I don't have to really worry about money. But in my mind right now, I don't really have to worry about money um, at all because I can, you know, make money without money confidently. Like, I know if I just go out there and work a consistent shift, like, it doesn't have to be 14 hours a day, but, like, if you do a consistent shift of just door knocking in this business of wholesaling single-family homes, like, you'll get something. You'll get at least two or three deals a month, and if they make you five or $10,000 a month, like, that's better than everybody in America is doing. 95% of people are doing. So, um, but just work those shifts, you know what I mean? Put in, Put in six days a week. Um, you know, I'm trying to work every day, uh, when I'm working, you know, and then I take a vacation and I take a healthy one. I took 18 days off, uh, you know, uh, two months ago. So, um, you know, again, I didn't, you know, I could have just taken a week off, but like, you know, I could afford to actually take 18 days off. How many people can say that, you know, and then still come back and have some money. So, um, and then take another vacation. Um, so uh, you know, and then another. So, you know, again, you can do this, you can make, you can absolutely do it. I was the worst person when I started out. I didn't know anything and I made a bunch of mistakes. But, um, if you really get out there and do it, it'll work for you. Just be consistent, be persistent. Um, every master was once a disaster. So, you know, when I was going through the tough times trying to learn it, learn it from people, um, I'm thankful for those times now. So, you know, whoever's out there struggling right now, if you just keep doing it, you'll eventually get good at it, no matter what you do. If you're an actor, if you're a singer, if you're in real estate, if you're in stock trading, if you're, a, you know, any doctor, whatever it is, like you keep doing it, like you'll eventually, it'll come to you. So this is Nate Ness. Um, again, it's probably 930 in the morning and I am going to produce some leads. I'm going to go knock doors at 11 a.m. until probably about eight o'clock tonight. So, you know, I'm very serious about my, my future and things that I want. So, um, I'm going to go make it happen for myself, uh, while I'm teaching somebody else. So, uh, Nate Ness education, Nate Ness, I'm out.